Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial on how to get keyboard inputs using Python. Um, Python has a really great package that I use all the time for automation called PyAutoGUI. So today I'm just going to demonstrate some of the functions of PyAutoGUI and let you explore how to create programs that can automate your work and simulate keyboard and mouse inputs. But today let's focus on the keyboard. So first we're going to import PyAutoGUI. That's the library that we're going to be using. And um, make sure that it's installed. So if you don't know how to install that, just go to your terminal and do pip install pyautogui. Pip is the Python package manager. Mine's already installed. Um, in some cases, it might be pip3, so you might want to look out for that. But install that package, and then let's start playing around. So. PyAuto GUI lets us basically create keystrokes in, in a few different ways, and some of them are convenient for different purposes. So the most simple one is just let's press a key. So if I want to press a key, I can just call pyautogui.press, and then I'm going to put in a string here, and that string is going to be the key that I want to press. So if I press the if I want to press the one key which is the one on the main part of the keyboard, the top left of the keyboard, I would do one. Um, and some of the, some of the keys have a, a little bit of a special name for differentiation purposes. So the number pad one key would be num1. Um, the A key is going to be A. So you kind of get the idea. Um, so if I want to press a key, like let's say I want to press the T key, I could do pyautogui.press T. And this will press the T key and release the key. So let's run it and see what happens. And there you go. See, it typed a key. So just be a little bit careful when you're using PyAuto GUI in your applications. It is going to be typing and clicking and doing things like that. And it can actually start to goof up your source code if you're not careful. So that's the press key. So, and of course, we could do them in succession. So if I did PyAuto GUI uh, dot press, you know, I could do. If I wanted to write the word the, I could do something like this. Okay. And if I hit run, it's going to type out the word the. Okay. So that would be a little bit annoying though if we wanted to, you know, let's say I wanted to type in a whole string like hi, how are you? It would be annoying if I had to do a line of code for every character. So luckily, Pi Auto GUI gives us a way to just type in text in one go. And the command is called typewrite. So you can do pyautogui.typewrite. And let's say I pass in a string. My message is hello world. OK. And if I run this, it's going to type in hello world. There you go. It typed it in right there. So, so very cool stuff. So this is a great way to automate um, if you want to simulate sending messages or things like that. Um, for a video game, if you're interested in automation and botting, this is how you could integrate a chatting, you know, responding to messages and things like that. Um, we can also make this look a little bit more realistic. So let me demonstrate another interesting part of TypeWrite. So TypeWrite can also take an integer, which is an, uh, a delay. So um, we could say, hello world, comma, let's say one. And look at that. So it's got a one second delay between keystrokes. See that? See how it's typing it out right here live? So very cool. So that's that's kind of slow, obviously. We, we probably wouldn't want it to type that slow if we were trying to simulate a human interaction. We might do something like, uh, well, let's do 0.15. And look at that, it's like somebody's typing it out. Let me move it down to another line here. Save it, run it. There you go, so it's typing out hello world, just like we would on the keyboard. Very cool. So another function that you might wanna do is, um, you might want to hold a key and then press another key or something like that. You know, Depending on your application, there might be 
instances where I want to hold the shift key and press something and then release the shift key. So how can we do that? So other than press, which is basically the key down, pressing the key and releasing it, we could also call pi auto GUI dot key down. And to demonstrate this, um, and it, this is again, this could get a little bit of an, a little bit annoying. So, um, but the key down will will hold down this key and it will not release it. So if I put in the shift key, or I guess let's just do it the annoying way. If I put down key down A, and I run this thing, it's going to hold that the A key down. It's not going to release it. There you go. It's just like if I was holding the A key down on the keyboard. And that's going to keep going until I actually press my keyboard and the operating system can register the key went down and up. So just be a little bit careful. Like I said, if you're if you're playing around in your source code and you're running this application, it could start generating stuff all over the place and it can mess you, mess you up. So that's the key down. So that key will stay down until it's told to come up. So Pi Auto GUI also has a key down, key up function. This will release the A key. And, oops, let's see, what did I do? Let's try this again. There you go, it typed in a single A. So key down, key up, that's the, this is the exact equivalent of doing key press. Or, or just press. So these two lines of code here are equivalent to this. It's kind of a convenience thing. But what we could do is we could um, import time, the time uh, library here. So we could put the key down and then we could sleep. So we could do a time, just to de demonstrate, we could do time dot sleep. Let's do two seconds and then it key up. So just to demonstrate that, there you go. It's holding it for two seconds and then it should release. There you go. Very cool. So another thing is you might want to um, you might want to have keys go down and come up in a certain order. Like for example, Control Alt Delete is the common Windows. I'm using Linux, but Windows you know Control Alt Delete is a common uh, combination of characters. So there's also a function that's really useful for doing combinations in order. So what it'll do is it'll press the keys in order, it'll press and hold the keys in order, and then release them in the reverse order. So it's kind of a way to, to get like that control, like you're holding control delete and then releasing it. And the way to do that is you could do pi auto GUI dot hotkey. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in uh, the we're going to pass in as many keys as we want. So what we would do is we would do, for example, if I wanted to do Control Alt Delete, I would do Control. So, and you can look at Pi Auto GUI's website to look at what the strings are, but they're pretty intuitive for what each each character is or what each uh, key is. So Control Alt Delete. So with this line of code, it should press Control Alt Delete. So just to show you what Control Alt Delete does on a Linux machine, on my machine. It's going to do, oops, that's the control escape, sorry. Control delete should take me to this logout menu on my computer. So I just pressed it for real here, control delete, just to give you an idea. So now let's run this program and see if it does that. It does the same thing. There you go. So it pressed that automatically. So that, so again, what the hotkey does that's a little bit different is first it presses control, holds it. Then it presses the alt key, holds it then presses the delete key, then releases delete, then releases alt, then releases control. And you could make this as long or as short as you want. We could chain in, you know, we could chain in, press the A key, press the B key. You could chain this as long as you want. This is a way to kind of chain key, key combinations together, which is often a very uh, popular thing to do. So between all these different functions, there, you can essentially, emulate your keyboard input on any application using Python. And it's very intuitive and it just takes a couple of lines of code. So this is a great short summary on Pi Auto GUI with keyboard input. Um, check out another video I'll do. I'll, I'll do one for mouse inputs and maybe some of the other functions of Pi Auto GUI. 
and look at the Pi Auto GUI uh, documents if you want to get more information. So I hope this was informative to get you started on automation. Um, if, it, if you found it useful, please like this video. Uh, please you know, consider subscribing to my channel. I like to do videos on automation, AI, machine learning, and uh, hope to see you in another video. So thanks and have a great day.